It's a very good evening and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi. Now, yesterday was Women's Day in South Africa. Happy Women's Day and let's hope you celebrated and reflected well. Today, we discuss how kids react to gaming and the internet. We also talk about how content can reach the right audience online. Ebola has killed nearly a thousand people in West Africa. We tell you about technology to track it faster. Science Week ended yesterday in South Africa. We have some information on how it went. We are live, so find us on SABC Network on Facebook and Twitter. We're on News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Let's start with your social media and technology news. The city of Johannesburg says it's delaying the rollout of its broadband strategy. This is because the metro has terminated its contract with a company called City Connect Communications, which would have had a big task of executing this plan. The project was expected to go live on July 1 last year. Network producer Buidu Melokasa has been tracking the story for us. The city of Johannesburg broadband strategy cost 1 billion rand. The project is a part of a plan to connect to all the city's main offices and branches. It will also be used to roll out a thousand Wi-Fi hotspot by the end of 2016. This should benefit the city's residents to afford and access cheap internet. Now the project has come to a halt. Johannesburg accuses City Connect, the company that was entrusted with the rollout of the project, of not delivering. We contacted the COJ for comment and received this email response from the communications director, Gabu Tugwana. The email says they will only answer any questions from network once they've reached a settlement agreement with City Connect. In its website, City Connect says it's South Africa's leading metro and access layer fiber optic specialist that addresses the market's needs for both civil and network services. This sounds like a good description of why COJ would give them such a project. In a telephonic conversation, all City Connect CEO Musanko C. could tell Network is that the company has met with COJ and the two are trying to reach what he called an amicable solution. He didn't want to be engaged further than that. City Connect was supposed to build the necessary infrastructure in partnership with Ericsson. The World Health Organization has declared the Ebola outbreak in West Africa an international health emergency. At least 961 people have been killed in the current Ebola outbreak. This is the worst since the virus was identified in the 1970s. Now, a Nigerian company has started a basic website that provides facts about Ebola. Big Cable Media's website is called EbolaFacts.com. It provides simple information on what Ebola is and how one can take precautions against it. The company says it wants to translate the information into local Nigerian languages like Yoruba, Igbo, and Pidgin. At the same time, there is another company in the United States of America that is working on providing a home kit that can test for Ebola in just under 15 minutes. And a team of South African Ebola experts is taking a mobile laboratory to Sierra Leone. Nearly a thousand people have been killed by the Ebola virus since March this year. There is no approved cure yet, just a test drug that's been used on two American aid workers. To test for Ebola could take up to 10 days, at which point the carrier could have infected other people. Now a team of South Africa's leading Ebola experts is taking a high-tech mobile diagnostics laboratory to Sierra Leone to help contain the deadly virus. The team is led by Professor Yanis Paveska, who has studied outbreaks of disease in Africa over the last 40 years. The major reason to deploy the mobile app is to shorten the time between collection of the specimens and providing the doctors with the diagnosis. Speed it up. America's Cogenics lab has created a test that has detected the Ebola virus within minutes. The Cogenics test is being used by health organizations in area where the virus is a serious threat. It does a rapid test as the patient waits similar to the HIV tests. The company hopes to get final approval for the home test in the next three years. There is also a handheld electrometer detector that can perform chemical analysis. This tool transmits results to a cloud database from any mobile phone, even to the basic GSM models. This is important because nearly 3 billion people worldwide have basic cell phones that make calls and send text messages. Most existing test devices require 3G or 4G networks that are limited in Africa. 
The plan is for the detector to one day enable a wide range of tests such as blood glucose, electrolyte levels in humans, malaria, and even Ebola. One science journal, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, says that the device is called the Universal Mobile Electrochemical Detector, or UMED. The data that the UMED collects can be transmitted by plugging it into your cell phone's headphones. All these efforts are with the hopes to at least contain the disease now and to use technology to better deal with it in the future. MTN says mobile phone termination rates are part of the company's revenue reduction in South Africa. Despite this, there's significant growth in other markets in Africa and the Middle East. MTN's South Africa revenue is down 7%, but overall, the network operator is doing better by 10.7%, thanks largely to other countries like in Nigeria, which is the South African company's largest market. In Nigeria, MTN's revenue is 21.5% better. In Cameroon, the company has 62.5% of the market. CEO Sviso Dabengwa says their South Africa revenue decline is partly due to mobile termination rates, which we've told you about here on Network before. These are rates that are charged by bigger companies like MTN and Vodacom to smaller companies like Celsius and Telcom Mobile when they are carrying them on their network. Voice calls have gone down as well, and the company head says diversification has helped a great deal. Data has jumped to nearly 39%. Mobile money is another way MTN is trying to diversify. We have partnered uh, with uh, some retailers to offer uh, uh, certain financial services uh, over and above just being able to transfer. Uh, there are points at which uh, customers can cash in or cash out. Um, so uh, mobile money is an important part of our services um, going forward. Earlier this year, we heard that MTN and Vodacom are buying their subscribers who have contracts with National Mobile. Dabengwa says that this process shouldn't change much for the clients. The National Mobile uh, subscribers that we are acquiring are subscribers that are already MTN subscribers. I think the only difference now is that they will not be served uh, by National Mobile, but they will be served directly uh, by MTN. Apart from profits, MTN says it's building e-libraries in Ghana and providing at least 45 South African schools with computer labs and internet connectivity. South Africa's mobile phone network providers are rolling out smartphones that are way cheaper than what's already in stores. Vodacom has revealed its smart kicker phone, which is behind me, which costs under 550 rand. The kicker follows the stepper, which came from MTN a few months ago. The two do this as Microsoft says it will no longer produce the Nokia Asha, which is also under 1,000 rand. Vodacom's smart kicker runs on the Android operating system. Remember those training science projects we had to do for the National Science Expo when we were in school? Those still continue. Learners from across the country were marveled by all sorts of scientific items available to them during South Africa's National Science Week, which ended yesterday, 9 August. This is all in an effort to lure children to science and technology professions. Companies such as the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research and ESCOM hosted South African high school learners at this year's National Science Week. This is part of the Department of Science and Technology's plan to get kids interested in science-related professions, but government says it needs more help. We're producing around 1,800 PhDs annually. We want to grow that to 6,000 a year, uh, and we're working toward that target. We need more funding to do that. Learners at the Science and Technology Expos are still excited about what they were exposed to there. To them, more local inventions are necessary. I think to create something new, you're making your mark in the future. We created a program that actually translates text into speech and is also able to recognize um, slang words, mixed language. And maybe their seemingly simple high school projects could end up as popular as other South African inventions like Mixit and MTN. And remember where the first heart transplant was done? Other high school pupils got to play a little on CSIR stands. SABC Network on Facebook and Twitter. News Network at sabc.co.za and email. Let's take a short break.
zoom into Africa. This is South Africa. The president is Mr. Jacob Zuma. South Africa became a republic in 1960 and attained democracy in 1994. The population is more than 50 million people. One of South Africa's major languages is English. Monetary unit, the RAND. still on network welcome back worldwide online advertising is getting personal and at times intrusive advertisers look at what we like online and then send us personalized information we'll discuss online advertising in a moment but first here are some tips on how to get around intrusive advertising not all online advertising is bad or intrusive and it can come in handy in a time of need take for instance when a person updates their relationship status on Facebook to engage this could act as a trigger to advertisers to show ads that can assist in planning your wedding, which is helpful. But in instances where advertisers overstep the boundary, the consumer does have some recourse. Take pop-up adverts, for example. They are invasive and unfortunately are here to stay. The good news is that various software programs to block these nuisance adverts are readily available. Tips for the user is that after installing a pop-up blocker, you should keep them up to date as some advertisers keep creating new and creative threats. One should also ensure that the software is running as some do not become active automatically. And because blocker software programs are not 100% effective, avoid clicking on pop-ups that keep appearing as they can lead to even more pop-ups and even viruses. Joining us now to discuss the issue of online advertising, pop-ups and privacy is Kirsty Sharman. She's the managing director of a new online media buying agency called Retro Media. They say their mission is to guarantee relevant online audiences for their clients. Hello and thank you for being a part of our network, Kirsty. Pleasure. Nice to be here. Mm. Um, now, Kirsty, how do you manage to match up ads with the right advertiser or the right audience? Um, I think for us, this is really just, this is a tricky one. And I think this is why we sort of moved into the media buying space and, and not necessarily away from the content and the, and the PR space, but we decided to look more at doing paid for media because we just felt that we could do it better in the sense that, you know, a lot of, a lot of brands are, are pushing messages on people and it's all about impressions and it's all about where we can just get clicks quickly. And for us, that's not, not really what we're about. We're more about asking, you know, what sort of person will relate to this advert? What sort of person is likely to buy this product? Where is that person spending their time online? And what is the right way to talk to them when it's right for them? And how do you determine that? How do you determine that the person is the right person to, to receive an advert? Yeah, I think, um, I think this goes back to more of the traditional, uh, the age-old method of just asking people, asking people where they are online. We deal a lot with the top bloggers in South Africa. So a lot of the guys across the motoring sector, parenting sector, entertainment sector, nightlife sector, I think across the board there and you know for us we often go to them with campaigns and we say to them okay we've, we've got this product you know what what's sort of the best way for us to for you to talk to your readers about it what's the best way for us to make sure that people notice this advert and I think the other thing that that we really we, we try our best to play strongly at is is making sure that our content is always remarkable so making sure that it's not just a pop-up that's irrelevant and but but if you have a pop-up that is on a parenting site that maybe for instance advertises an F SUV and you are a mother, that's actually relevant to you. You're going to be served an ad anyway. I think what people tend to forget is, you know, on TV, on radio, or, you know, all those spaces, people get served advertising all the time because the people who run those networks and the people who spend time putting that content out there that we all, let's be honest, enjoy, um, they need to get paid too. Sounds complicated. Not particularly. Mm. Um, uh but you, you touched briefly on pop-ups, and you said if you have pop-ups, then they must reach the right kind of audience. But mm. how do you ensure that the person actually looks at what the ad says and doesn't press, uh, press skip ad? Okay, so we can determine that. Um, I think the, the world of the internet is a great thing because it allows us to have really a lot more detailed reporting than you ever did receive in the traditional advertising space before. So we can, if we, for instance, do a pre-roll campaign on a YouTube advert, we can see how long people have watched that 
video for. So if the video, for instance, is 58 seconds long and we run a campaign and people are only watching up to 28 seconds, you know, for us, we kind of say, okay, well, what can we do better? How can we make the videos better next time so that when we serve somebody this advert, they actually watch it? Because, you know, for us, it's more about getting actions. It's more about getting people to buy into your brand. If, if it's just an impression and no one's doing anything, then we're all wasting our money. Now, there's an issue of privacy online because if you're saying that you can find the right audience, that means that you have to look at what that person is looking at. Doesn't that worry you that people might look at you as a company that, um, that infringes on their privacy? Um, I think that sometimes can also be misinterpreted in a sense because, you know, for us, what we're not looking at is your private information. We're looking at the sort of content that you read. So the only information we're really seeing is if, you're, if you are, for instance, on a parenting site and you are between the ages of 35 and 45 and you are a woman, then, you know, that's really the, the depth of the information. You know, we're not getting your email address. We're not getting your bank details. We aren't getting any of that content. But, you know, for us, it's just important to say, the people we want to advertise, where are they online? Yeah, yeah. Instead of just anywhere. All right. Kirsty Sharman, Managing Director of Retro Media, thank you very much for being a part of our network tonight. Pleasure. Right. Now, it's Women's Month in South Africa, and as a result, we're celebrating women in technology. We spoke to Henley Turner, who is the Technical Information Service Specialist at PPC. I've been involved in the construction industry for about 32 years, first as a librarian, and then later with a postgraduate graduate qualification in marketing. But the construction industry sits in me, it sits in my blood. We as women don't keep on about the fact that we are women, but if we show passion and commitment to what we're doing, then we've arrived, then we can achieve anything. Technology is so much part of our lives these days, we cannot have one without the other. And it just, it just seems a natural development that in the construction industry that we should imply or apply technology as well. This is the way people are going. Social networks have become part of our lives. People are on Twitter, people are on Facebook, in the business environment, people are on LinkedIn. But we did a bit of research within our industry to say to our, our customers, what is it that you really want? And we found that they're looking for appropriate information. They don't want to be bombarded with information. So appropriate information, focused information, but they also want to network. They want to engage with experts. Right, we'll talk about gaming and time spent on the internet when we return. Stay with us. The Swaziland Tourism Authority invited Kaleidoscope on a media tour of what has become known as the Little Switzerland of Africa, the Kingdom of Swaziland. The Mantango Waterfall is one of Swaziland's best known and most accessible waterfalls, as it can be seen within 50 meters. That's Kaleidoscope, Sundays, 5.30 p.m. on SABC News. SABC Network on Facebook and Twitter, News Network at SABC.co.za on email. Welcome back. Now, in 2013, Missouri University Research said introverts spend a lot of time talking to other people on the Internet. The research says Internet use may induce changes in some brain, in some brain re reward pathways that are similar to that seen in drug addiction. There's also research that says a huge chunk of video gamers are introverted males. In an effort to solve this problem, an internet rehab center has been opened in Delhi in India. The center is called Center for Children in Internet and Technology. Dis in, in technology distress rather. Joining us in studio to talk about some of these issues is a managing editor of an online video gaming magazine, LazyGamer.net, Kevin Mannion. In Cape Town, we also have Karen Thompson from the Harmony Addiction Clinic. Hello, and thank you for being a part of our network. 
Thanks for inviting us. Hi, Great. nice to be here. Karen, let's start with you. Can we really put internet or video gaming addiction on par with drug addiction? Most definitely. Um, as you were saying, the, the neurological pathways that get activated in drug addiction um, are activated through social media, uh, gaming addiction, and everything. We start, uh, you know, centering ourselves um, uh, towards the, the rewards we receive in our brains. So we essentially looking for that dopamine high, um, and and normal pleasures don't uh, satisfy those needs. And do you agree with this? No, obviously, uh, it's not in my belief that it's anywhere near as addictive as in alcohol or drugs. Gaming is just an interactive entertainment experience. So it's the same as movies or reading or going out with your friends. It's just the fact that you're doing it together online, on the internet, and normally in your room, that people start getting worried that you're, you're becoming a problem even though you're not. Okay, but Karen, since you're saying it's on par with, um, with drug addiction, how much time is too much time? Well, I think more than an hour a day is definitely too much time. Um, and, you know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, they want us to be hooked and addicted. Um, they know what to do to make us crave more. You were talking about introverted males. Um, these people live in a fantasy world. People are gaming for, for six to ten hours a day. Um, I mean, they have people, people have died from 50 hours of gaming. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a serious, serious problem. People do not interact with each other socially anymore. So, so to say it's okay, some people may be able to handle it, but I think we're seeing more children and teenagers with a real problem. Gavin Manon, how much time do you spend on your video games a day? A day? Yeah. Well, I'm, I've got a family, I've got kids, I've got a job. So generally, I'm an hour, two hours a day at most. And well, you I work at lasergamer.net, so you have to spend time uh, playing video games, aren't you? Yes, well, it's part of the job, but it's a fun job to have. Mm. And who do you think some of the people that go to your website are? Do you think these are the uh, introverted people that you're talking about? I can't disagree. There's a lot of gamers are introverted. They find it a lot easier to interact socially on the internet over the uh, voice communications instead of going out and meeting people. But growing up, I was the same, and I've met more friends and more decent people through internet gaming. Mm. And yes, there are problem sides to gaming. But mm. to say it's majority, I think, is very misguided. Mm. Karen, is there a problem then if people are shy in the real world or introverted in the real world and then they go to the internet to meet friends? Where's, where's um, the problem I don't there? think there's a problem with that. I think that for some people they can use uh, alcohol and not become alcoholics, but for certain people it, it is a real problem. I think when your social interaction starts, uh, you know, taking strain, when you start, your moods become dependent on the game that you play, you crave it, uh, you don't want to do other activities because all you can think about is your gaming, um, you become miserable when you can't do it, I think then it becomes a real problem. Uh, when self-care, you know, goes, when you're not looking after yourself or your family and, and everything else becomes secondhand, then I really do think you need to address the situation seriously. Mm. India is opening a rehab center, Karen. Um, do you think that South Africa has such a big problem as India, as India does? Well, um, we, I'm from the Harmony Addictions Clinic, and we are getting more and more concerned parents contacting us because their teenagers and youngsters are just withdrawing from them completely. So I have seen a huge increase in, in um, gaming addiction, and I really believe that if we do not monitor it and set boundaries, um, it can become a very serious problem. And should we set these boundaries, Gavin? Oh, but surely, but you're talking about the same thing as everything else a kid does. If you allow a kid to sit in the room 24 hours a day reading a book, that's, they're going to withdraw from the asshole. If you just let them sit and watch movies all day, you're going to get the same problem. You can't play blame gaming just because you're not being the active parent you are required to be. Gaming is just another way for children to experience growth, learn new things, and push their boundaries of who they want to be as people. Um, uh, Karen, how do you deal with those parents who then come to you? Because Gavin here is saying parents shouldn't play the, ga the blame game, they should be parents. Well, I completely agree with what he's saying. However, I don't believe a child needs to play games. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really serve them in any way. Sure, there are educational games, but really get outside, play in nature, um, interact with your parents and your friends, like learn real life skills, not something that you're going to be learning on TV. All right, Kevin, what is the healthy time to spend? We, I asked you earlier how much time you spend, and then Karen said if you spend more than an hour, that's already too much. 
My personal, with my own children, I wouldn't like them playing more than an hour and a half, two hours without taking a solid break, getting outside, seeing some sunshine, doing something different for a while. If they end up playing five hours a day, that's fine, as long as they're broken into chunks. It's when they sit dedicated into it where I think the problem is beginning. All right. Gavin Manion from lasergamer.net. Thank you very much for being a part of our network. As well as Karen Thompson joining us from Cape Town. She's with Harmony Addictions Clinic. Thank you very much for being a part of our network tonight, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so a lot of people upload pictures of the food they're eating on Instagram in the hope that their followers will find it to be art. College Humor on YouTube took a Nickelback song and turned it into a cool tune that makes fun of these people. That's what we leave you with tonight. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook and Twitter News Network at sabc.co.za and email from me, Pumela Lezondi, and the rest of the team. Have a good one, and thank you for being a part of our network tonight. Look at this Instagram, it's been an inside of him, started out as a lemon tart, then my phone went and made it art, and these are my fingernails, the beauty is in the details, drinking my ties on a cruise, just a coincidence is also booze, everyone look at my feet. Get jealous that I'm at the beach Probably knew I was going there You saw my planes wing in the air I get bored of city lights Try seeing them in black and white Putting glasses on a cat I'm the first one to think of that Oh, 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 oh. he thinks he's people Keep watching that.